Hello, dark reader, and welcome to the Dark Side of the Library podcast. I'm your host, Katie. Today, we're going to be talking about a very cool, brand new graphic novel called The Night Eaters. This is by the one and only Marjorie Liu and Santa Takeda. I've done a previous podcast episode on their most sensational comic book series that they released back in 2017 called Monstrous. I still highly recommend it. And I definitely recommend The Night Eaters. So I'll go over who these guys are real quick again. And then we'll talk about the summary of Night Eaters and how I felt about this graphic novel. Before I begin, excuse me, I am a little sick today. So I'm, I probably sound a little nasally. And if there are any reads that you've found interesting thus far as we go through the spooky season, as we progress to the holiday season, keep our show notes in mind. We do post everything on darksideofthelibrary.com. Make sure to check that out if there are books that we've talked about in the past that you are actually very much interested in. All right, let's talk about Sana Takeda first. She is a comic artist from Japan, and she has won a lot of awards, and her art style is very distinguishable. I mean, it is gorgeous artwork. I highly re- recommend checking her out, and that is going to be in our show notes. Uh, but she is most well-known for her work in Monstrous. Now, Marjorie Liu is an author, and she's done, obviously, Monstrous, so Santa Takeda and Marjorie Liu have written and done things together in the past. Uh, we also have the X-Men series. She's done Han Solo, and she's also contributed to actual novels, such as Wing Bearer, there's also the Tangle Root Palace, etc. So she's been in the comic industry for a very long time. Both are incredibly phenomenal. Now let's talk about Night Eaters. Let's I'll, I'll, let me review the summary with you guys. So this is what the publisher says about Volume One, and apparently it's going to be a trilogy. So this is one of three. It's called She Eats the Night. So Chinese American twins Millie and Billy are having a tough time. On top of the multiple failures in their personal and professional lives, they're struggling to keep their restaurant afloat. Luckily, their parents, Ipo and Keon, are in town for their annual visit. Having immigrated from Hong Kong before the twins were born, Ipo and Keon have supported their children through thick and thin and are ready to lend a hand. But they're starting to wonder, has their support made Millie and Billy incapable of standing on their own? When Ipo forces them to help her clean up the house next door, a hellish and run-down ruin that was the scene of a grisly murder, the twins are in for a nasty surprise. A night of terror, gore, and supernatural mayhem reveals that there is much more to Ipo and her children than meets the eye. So think of this book as a combination of Monsters by Barry Windsor Smith and Crazy Rich Asians by Kevin Kwan. I might be a little biased here because I love them so much and I loved Monstrous. Uh, I definitely think this is about a five out of five. But I do want to let you guys know that this is not, I would not put horror as the forefront of the genre. It is more like a comedy. So this is a comedy horror uh, graphic novel so far. Maybe two and three will start to be a little more serious. But as far as volume one is concerned, it's quite hilarious. And uh, that was unexpected and I was pleasantly surprised. It was a great change of pace. So the cover of the graphic novel is absolutely stunning and you can find that over on YouTube as well at Dark Side of the Library. Um, It is stunning. The inside of the comic book as well is stunning. So Santa Takeda has a very distinct style like I was talking about. There are these fine details. It is definitely more of this watercolor palette. It's a little lightly colored, but still really, I don't know. It's very, it resonates with you. It's just, it's perfect. It's beautiful. Not only that, as far as the illustration aspects of this book go, um, the expressions on the characters really just draw, just make the story more fantastic. So Monstrous was just visually stunning. If you're familiar with Monstrous and how the art is and how every panel looks, it's it's beautiful. It's stunning. Now, Night Eaters, it was not as epic, definitely a little less of that in Night Eaters, but there's a lot more focus on like the character expressions, their movement that really solidifies how like what the story is kind of about. 
So you think that Millie and Billy are kind of the spotlight characters, our main protagonists, but really the focus in the Night Eaters is their mother and father, Ipo and Keon, who are absolutely precious. So Ipo is incredibly serious. I mean, like, she takes stoic to a whole other level. And Keon is this golden-hearted man. He's very sweet, gentle, compassionate. And it's very clear with the kids, too. So the kids have a bit of a struggle with their mom. They're not really sure how to kind of deal with her and her seriousness and just how cold she can be. And then with their dad, it seems like they have a more pleasant relationship with their dad. But when their dad does give them a critique, it really see it seems like it weighs on their shoulders substantially more versus the mom. So we get this beautifully illustrated story where we begin with the twins, Millie and Billy, together, kind of the foundation of where their life is at, their parents, just their relationship. And then throughout the story, we are bounced into the past and we get a little little bits of Ipo and Keon and their times in Hong Kong, how they met, how Ipo, what, like what her life was like before having children, etc. And this is in the year 1957. Ipo, even in her younger years, has always been, I guess for a lack of a better term today, a badass. <laughs> She's always just been like somebody you don't fuck with. And I really enjoy it. She's just awesome. And then you have this sweet little man, Keon, who just, I don't know, just melts her heart a little bit. But she doesn't, you don't see a lot of that. You don't see the melting happening. She's always the stoic force in in their life. She loves gardening. And the kids like to tease her. Or even, maybe even it's a serious thing where they're like, you love your plants more than you love your own children. So it's really hilarious. The book is hilarious, but there is a lot of horror elements and gore elements, especially towards the end of the book when you have Ipo, who is like tired of her kids' shit. Granted, they're trying their best, but she comes from a totally different perspective, a totally different life, and I think she's just trying to kind of merge that together, at least show her children what that looks like. So that's done in a horror element where there's demons and hauntings, ghosts, you know, blood, gore, etc. happening. But it's also a, there's a lot of great symbolism. It's not necessarily symbolism. This is actually what it is. There's a lot of interesting aspects to the story that relate to being a first generation immigrant versus maybe a second generation uh, person whose parents were immigrate, immigrants, but, you know, they've, they've lived here for their entire life. So we have that. That's a huge aspect to this story where we've got a lot of these cultural explanations. There's a bit of this divide as well with the children because they don't understand some of the sacrifices that their parents did make to become immigrants or why they'd even want to come and live in this foreign land and navigate this almost terrifying place. It's totally different than where their home is. But then we have the other layer, which is that supernatural horror layer that tops it off. And I, I really think that's a really fun, interesting part of this entire story is kind of that dichotomy between the two generations. And you can see what struggles each person is having based on their generation. And there's a lot of interesting symbolism there as far as like how specific generations react to stress as well. And I think that's kind of an interesting take on horror as well. So you have a one generation and it's funny because the dad, Keon, actually says this to his kids. And Keon, you know, you would think he's this really gentle, soft spoken man. He's very sweet, smiling all the time, you know, just adorable. I want to hug him. But when he tells his children, like, yeah, you know, your mom might be a little hard, like, she might be going a little hard on you guys right now, but to be perfectly honest, you guys are kind of soft. It's interesting to see that and then having the horror-based, like, the horror element on top of it because it implements fear. So the reaction of being in a very scary position from one generation to the next, a generation that had to make specific sacrifices that didn't necessarily live in comfort, 
that lived through war times, you know, that kind of thing versus a generation that's had it pretty good. I mean, granted, there are things that aren't great, but you can see there's that huge generational disconnect. You know, the kids are always talking about, oh, we could be famous. We can be on Instagram for X, Y, and Z, or we can do whatever. And, you know, I dropped out of med school because I didn't want to handle this anymore. And, you know, they're trying really hard. Granted, I agree. They are trying really hard. But then you've got the parents who have lived through a whole different set of stresses and how each person reacts to fear. So I thought that was a really interesting aspect to this entire comic book. And it's very prevalent. So we spend a lot of time in this comic book building the foundation of what their family kind of looks like, what roles each of them play, the differences between how each one was raised. By the end of it, we kind of get a almost different story and we're going to be moving forward into something else that's probably more towards that supernatural horror element because... By the way, spoilers, uh, we have basically uh, the parents are the parents from hell and they're really awesome. So it's interesting what they've done here and I cannot wait to see where this actually goes, especially since we end on that note where, hey, uh, mom and I are not who you think we are. We're not actually human at all. And then basically end scene, volume one. So now we only have volume two and three to wrap up this whole story arc. And now the kids are like, holy shit, are we even human? Like, what do we do? That kind of thing. And it's really fun. My only disappointment is that we're going to only get volume two by 2023 in fall. So we have a very long ways to wait a whole nother year, but that's okay. I understand it takes a lot of time to make these beautiful pieces of art uh, and writing and just to make sure it flows well and it has such a great story that wraps everything up. But I feel like this is going to be a really fun story and it's shorter than monstrous as well. I think it's going to be really good. So if any of these aspects draw you into this comic whatsoever, I highly recommend checking out The Night Eaters. Honestly, this may end up being better than monstrous it's more light-hearted it's a lighter book as well it flows smoothly it has a very crisp uh storyline as far as we can tell granted we ended where it's like holy shit our parents are parents from hell uh yeah that's confusing but hopefully we you know hopefully we get an explanation of that a little later but it's a great comic and i do recommend it it's funny it's gory it's, it's horror. Um, a light-hearted horror. So check out The Night Eaters. This is by Marjorie Liu and Santa Takeda. This is She Eats the Night, book one out of three. It'll be a Night Eaters trilogy. If you're looking for other dark reads, again, make sure to check us out on Amazon Live. All of our socials are going to be in our show notes. But we're at Dark Side of the Library. And make sure to stay tuned for any of our future podcast episodes that come out on Wednesdays and Fridays, sometimes Mondays if it's crazy busy. But you can find all of these books or past books on our show notes. And we really appreciate you guys checking that out. Also, make sure to share the spooky podcast with your creepy friends, family, your loved ones, and to leave us a rating and review on your favorite listening app. It really helps us out. Thank you guys so much for listening. Have a creeptastic week and happy Halloween.